be a, a spook tober again. Oh, crap. Oh, that's bad. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that all looks kind of a. Uh, Sam, I mean, I know it's Halloween, but there's, there's no need to take things too far, is there? All right, I'm going to try this one more time. I'm going to click my fingers. And if that doesn't work, it's going to be a wet willy. And you know I have a phobia about getting my fingers wet. Hey, hey. Hello. Uh, You're not going to stab me, are you? Oh, that was not good. Not good. What, what was not good? You, you looked like you were having a jack moment there. I, I, I was stuck there. Stuck? Why do you mean stuck? There. Doing that. Well, sin since last time? Yeah, and I didn't get a wink of sleep. And you saw everything that happened? Moving on, folks. Maybe I'm over It must be October back in the real world. Oh, spooky season. Oh, yes. Yeah. And because it is spooky season, it's only appropriate that he's, he's, he's gone again. Oh, yes. Oh, well. Hello. Welcome back to Maybe Movies. Uh, my name is Max. Oh, my name is Sam. And thank you for joining us and thank you for watching. And all of the thank yous. Indeed. Many, many, many thank yous. And a happy Spooktober to you all. A sappy Spooktober? Is that what I said? <laughs> well, it was more like so happy. That's so happy. <laughs> I think I was trying to decide whether it should be happy or a slap happy. Yeah, all right. Spooktober. No, don't do that. We did not advocate any violence to anyone. No, no that's, that's naughty. Right, stop that. Silly. Yes, this isn't a tango advert. No, it isn't. Please, no. Please, God, no. <laughs> Why, yes, Tony, let's look again. Where well, should we begin? Uh, well, what we... Uh, ooh, hold on. In the faux pine bookcase corner, I've got Pumpkinhead. Ah, right. And over here on the extremely black bookcase, we have a ghost face? Well, that can only really mean one thing, then, can't well, it? Well, really can. <laughs> okay, so it looks like... We're under normal maybe movies rules, and looks like we've got Scream and Pumpkinhead. But before we jump into all of that good stuff, we have a couple of things to deal with. Oh, right, yes. Let's go with the poll first. The poll, the poll. Yes. Yes. So for those of you who didn't catch last month's uh, single episode, which is our mashup of The Conjuring and Beetlejuice, which became Conjuring the Beetlejuice, we ran our poll in all of our usual places. And the results were pretty close. It was six to four. Oh, right. Conjuring the Beetlejuice is not a maybe movie. Oh, well, there we have it. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Yep. The so people have decided. They certainly have. So, unfortunately, no, no fanfare. Do I have to do a loser's fanfare now? Or a boo or something. Yeah. I don't know. So I still have to do it. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> it's still work to do. So there will be a not a winner. Thing. Hey, yeah. user. Ding, ding, ding. There we go. So, thank you, as always, to everybody who voted, and please do make sure to watch our two episodes of Maybe Movies this month, and vote afterwards for whether or not our two new films, or which of our two new films, should be our Maybe Movie for the month. The other thing that we have to do is our competition. Okay. <laughs> Yes, we ran a competition last month in conjunction with our friends over at Maple Mystery Games. The prize on offer was one of their Halloween-themed party murder mysteries. Uh, I was going to do this and try and do like a big wheel and things like that, 
but then I, I, I couldn't figure out how to record it <laughs> off, <laughs> off my computer. So we're going to go OG low tech here, and we are going to delve into the Fez of Fortune. Ooh, where, yeah, Mrs. And it makes it have even better because it is a genuine Egyptian fez bought from a genuine Egyptian market trader in. Is it Luxor? Yeah, I think it was in. Uh, yeah, in Luxor. Oh, wow. Cool. So, yeah, all the names are in here, and we're going to give this a bit of a. Uh, hang on a minute, what am I doing? I can just do that, can't I? <laughs> Technical. Difficulties occur <laughs> at all technical levels. <laughs> there we go. Ooh. Ooh, that's, that's just like, it's just like, hi, Sam. V. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, if you would care to have a delve in the Fez of Fortune while I... He just can't resist, folks. He just can't <laughs> resist. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> what do we have? Our winner is... Billion Bytes. Billion Bytes. Fantastic. Congratulations, buddy. I will get that um, voucher code for your prize in the post to you. Well, in the post. I'll email it to you as soon as I can. Congratulations. Thank you for playing. We would like to do another competition at some point. I don't know what, what we're going to give away. Yes. Maybe we should... Uh, Ah! Oh. oh! An actual genuine piece of um, maybe movies memorabilia. Actually, it's not maybe movies. What about the cushion? Because it's not movies actually anymore, is it? It isn't movies actually anymore. No, we need to get a new cushion. So maybe we'll do that for Christmas. Yeah, there you Christmas go, Christmas giveaway would be uh, the actual cushion from the sofas of delirium. How would... It's not sweaty. It's fine. <laughs> Maybe you want that. I don't know. Let, shall we just move on? With, let's let's yes. please. Yeah, but yes. Thank you to everybody who took part in the competition. And keep an eye out for another one. As I said, it sounds like we'll be doing one in, in December. Pumpkinhead from 1988 and Scream from 1996. Yes, yes. This is going to be interesting. Um, <laughs> before we go into our proper kind of pre-production... Let's just figure out acts. That's the easiest bit to do first. Okay. So I okay. had, for Pumpkinhead, I had actual ends fleeing the scene. So after Billy's, after Billy gets run over. Oh, which right. Is about, it's about 21 minutes in, and the whole film is about an hour and 26. I had it, I had it later. I had, I had it at Where's the Witch? When he goes to see Buckflower? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. Yes, because it's a total shift, isn't it? It's not just his grief at the loss of his son it's I'm going to take a definite action to yeah yeah. retribution is, is the order of the day okay I, I can see that because again a, a lot of times sometimes I do split them by how I think the movie breaks up in chunks yeah I'll, so yeah, that's yeah. why I thought that one was about 21 because I had the end of act 2 make it stop make it stop which I had at 51 minutes which is, I think is when you first start seeing What's happening? Oh, right. Oh, not like this. Yeah. Yeah, not like this. Uh, yeah. Let's... Wait, 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 wait. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I suppose it could be. It's an oddly structured film, because, like, the damn demon doesn't turn up until the 45-minute mark. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, I, I always thought it was earlier. In my memory, it turns up much earlier in the movie. But there is, yeah, so much goes on beforehand. So yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll go with that. Cool. Uh, what about you? What did you have for Scream? I had basically the beginning of Act Two is like it's that next morning, and there's the news article about Colton Weary, and everybody starts talking about the character. White folks are dead. We get the fuck out of here. Um, yes. And it's just after Sydney's had her first interaction with Ghostface. Yeah, because you know I always put it down as the scene that's the end of Act One as opposed to the start of Act Two. Oh right. Oh, so okay. yeah, I had all of the stuff at Tatum's where she stays the night and gets the phone call. Yeah. When Billy's in jail is the, is the end of Act One. Yeah, that's that's yeah. exactly where I am. Yeah. yeah. Act three, I I'm not sure whether it's the party. I'll be right back. Or whether it's when everybody leaves the party to go to the president to f see the president's to, to, body. Yeah. I'm uh, not president. The principal the body. Principal Fonz. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, I had it kind of the same area. I had two. It's either discovering Neil's car, or after sex. I had. I thought after sex was the start of Act Three. All oh, right. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, that that is that which is, is basically the, that's the second one I had. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which I put that down as uh, an hour and fifteen minutes in, which leaves uh, thirty-one minutes for the third act. Okay. Yep. That's. Yeah. yeah. No Fantastic. Okay. Now how the fuck are we doing this? <laughs> well, first off, they are both um, single word titles. Uh-huh. We can't really split up Scream, so I think it's going to be Pumpkin Facing Ghost Head. <laughs> <laughs> I can't split yep. them any other way. Sure. So my first thought was this, the deciding factor about how we do this is the fact that Scream, as well as being a horror movie, is a, is a whodunit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the question is, so that we don't end up making two whodunits or no whodunits, one of them should be. So does the whodunit motif fit with Scream the franchise or with Ghostface the character because I know it's it runs through the entire franchise but obviously Ghostface is the killer throughout the entire franchise so we could sit with either so either we get whodunit Ghostface in the setting of Pumpkinhead and then just Pumpkinhead let loose in Woodsboro or we get a Pumpkinhead whodunit in Woodsboro and a more traditional slasher film with Ghostface in Pumpkinhead where as an audience we see both sides of the story Okay, uh, I I feel I feel like they should stay with their respective settings. Okay, uh, I do feel it's a, a feature of the franchise and it's fundamental. Okay, because even though Ghostface is always the killer, it's always a different killer. Sometimes there is one, sometimes there is multiple ones, but it's always a mystery as to who's behind the mask this time. Broken. Exactly. I kind of like the idea. I mean, obviously, we wouldn't have that, but we would have. Who summoned Pumpkinhead? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, in that, uh, which is the interesting thing, and again, it's how we make that work because of the the fact that they see what's happening as it's happening. So we may have to um, play around with that because the other question then is, if we're putting Ghostface into Pumpkinhead, does that mean we're putting Stu and Billy Loomis into Pumpkinhead, or are we just taking the character and assigning it to somebody within that franchise? <laughs> Good question. Annoying, but good. Um, no, I think that takes too much away from the Westboro uh, the, the West Bros. So we keep those two in there. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Fantastic. That's pretty that's much kind of it. it. That's, kind of it. <laughs> that's kind of it. I think we need it's to. It's kind of it until we start the actual movie, we, depending on which one we of course, choose to go with. Of course, and again, so we're under normal. Maybe movies rules, which we should really set out properly at some point. Maybe on a, I don't know, tattoo them on your forehead. No, we're not going to do that. No, let's not do that. <laughs> no, no. I mean, obviously, the main rule is is that we have one because maybe so that we can change something <laughs> fundamental about the film to make the film work. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we can only do it once. Otherwise, we have to think our way out of it. And with these, in so far as we can, follow the through line of the plot, or at least thematically follow the plot um, as much as. If anybody says come out to play, I'm going to hide behind the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Which, which one would you like to do first? I mean, for me, I think Ghost Head's going to be the easier. Okay. Do you um, have a preference? I don't have a preference. All right. So I think before we get started, because this is like a fundamental thing. Oh, no. Do we have the witch? What the? F- I have no idea. What's, do you think other people are moving into the delirium? Have they, have they all just had enough of the real world? Oh God! Soon there'll be an HOA. Oh, no, 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 they won't. No, they won't. Right? Do we still have the witch? We could, if we wanted. To, hmm, but that would probably be our because movie straight off the bat, wouldn't it? Well, would be we that. haven't started the movie yet. So no, That's why I'm asking these questions. Are you thinking that maybe we get something a bit supernatural with Ghostface? Or Ghost Head? Well, there are a lot of guns. Farmers? Who else? Farmers' mums. Of course, we, it's a rural community. Yeah, absolutely. And that changes things. It does. Uh, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. So maybe it's something like he goes to the witch to have the costume blessed or have some kind of power converted conferred onto the costume well I was thinking that maybe she has the costume and that it's 
Yes, of course, because we're not... Investment, a supernatural not, investment. So it's because I was thinking, if we ended up taking the whodunit thing, we could have just had somebody delivered this box of scary costumes here by accident. Mm-hmm. So there's loads of them around, but we don't need to do that because... Yeah. Who done it is over there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, I think we keep the witch. Again, I as you say, that's not a because movie because we haven't started yet. So Yeah. But if the movie if the witch is in the movie then we've got a reason for there to be a supernatural element to what's going on with Ghostface. Absolutely. Which just it just waylays some potential movie breaks down the line without forcing us to use it because movie. Mm-hmm. This is built into the script, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> and in like fashion, we can have a pumpkin head costume that's popular in Woodsboro so it's cheeks that it is a mortal agent until they discover that it's not mm. yeah okay yeah yeah but that's for the other movie that's for the other movie but just so I know I've said it now because I might forget by the time we get to mm. doing that one fantastic so from the top so we've got all of the same cast all of the, we don't have to nobody actually moves nobody apart moves from, this is an interesting one I don't think we've done one like this before where it's just where the antagonist moves, but the antagonist isn't a fixed per- person. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Because Pumpkinhead is a spell and Ghostface is a it's, costume. Yeah. So they're not tied to a particular character in, in, in the same way. No, so in which case then, I think, I think that's us, us done for Act 1. Because Act 1's going to be pretty much exactly the same, isn't it? I can't see anything being different about Act 1 at all. Cosmetic changes. Instead of the kids chanting about Pumpkinhead at the grocery store, mm. they'll be chanting about Ghosthead. Yes. Or Ghostface or whatever, you know, whatever we want to mm-hmm. say what the, the character's called in the movie. Uh, okay. No. Just for a second, I was going, are we making the same movie? Just with a different villain. I don't think we are. I think it's just that this first act. I think this first act this doesn't, first act doesn't act change does. um, because it's all the same setup. Yeah, the kid's going to freak out, run away to the cabin, yeah. do the things they do. Yeah, because if we make the supernatural element light so that obviously he has protection from damage but doesn't give him anything additionally supernatural, mm-hmm. therefore when we go through to the point of doing the kills and stuff, it's most of our job is going to be figuring out how we can do something approximating the kills oh, in right. Pumpkin okay, Hedge, I, 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 I want to say this now. I was thinking that the idea might be that the power is in the mask. Somebody stop me! So when the mask is reviewed, re- if the mask is removed, the person becomes vulnerable. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that makes sense. Obviously, yeah. Kids have no idea of this. No. I don't know. I mean, is, is that too easy? Is it too I, I like that because I was thinking, cause it, and again, especially about... Because then we've of, built in a way that, that vulnerability could be achieved. Of course. Mm-hmm. No, I like that because when I was thinking about it, again, when I was thinking of the names, like, like Ghost Head, part of that was that physically he looked normal, but the head has that kind of um, ethereal look to it, like uh, a ghost. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. It's like a ghostly version of the ghost face mask yeah yeah and and that's the thing is that's the bit that looks supernatural but that makes sense of tying it onto what you've just said it looks supernatural but that's the bit where he's vulnerable yeah if obviously if you take it off yeah so yeah okay cool yeah so that works fantastic yeah thank you <laughs> but yes I think act one is the same I said with apart from that cosmetic change of of the nursery rhyme okay okay that was easy <laughs> It's not going to last. <laughs> no, it's not going to last. Um, <coughs> All right. Okay, so we're on to Act Two. Um, what? Captain Cobweb over here seems to be protecting the family jewels. Oops. Okay. Something you want to tell us about there? Yeah, something we should be concerned about. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Skip over. Um, the start of it, we obviously with again, said, well, we didn't we need to touch much on Act One. We just kind of assume that if you've uh, seen Pumpkinhead, then you know how it goes. Yes, and we're not going to go through it all again if you haven't. Also, it's probably a good job that we didn't move Billy and Stu because they would have given us two Billies. Oh, it would have, wouldn't it? Yes. Uh, oh, that was the other thing I did notice, which was hilarious. The guy at the, the flashback bit, nineteen fifty-seven. Mm-hmm. The guy who runs up and knocks on his door. That's Dick Warlock. The original Michael Myers. Oh! How? How weird. Wait, what? I don't know, there's something in there. What the? 
I have. I got popcorn with it. I can't wait to see what happens. Um. <laughs> Well, well, hurry ball, mm. sour skeletons. <laughs> nice. nice. How did they get in there? <laughs> okay, so Ed goes up, sees Buckflower. You, mm. I hope you I hope you've got names because I didn't. I only remember the certain names. I think Buckflower's character is called Wallace, but I can't be a hundred percent on that. Because his son is Bunt, isn't it? Mm. Bunt. I think so. Mm. Yeah, I did, that one I did write down, but it's his grandson, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's his grandson. So yeah, again, that's going to follow the same way. Mm -hmm. I suppose the difference here would be it's not so much that, I suppose this is the other point we didn't really t touch on. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's summoning something to be, to enact his revenge. He is taking the revenge himself. Yes, he consciously. is. Consciously. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, oh well. yeah. Oh, he the bad guy. Mm -hmm. He the bad guy this time. I mean, Lance Hendrickson is a bad guy. I mean, that, like, like that never happened. <laughs> like that's ever a thing. Mm. Yeah. The more minutes of your time, about the same duration as the rest of your life. It does stand there. So his conversation with Wallace is a lot more about, are you sure? Are you sure you want to do this? Because mm -hmm. mm. my other thing sparked my memory. Because my other thing about well, this is the whole thing with ghost head or ghost face. If somebody is wearing the, the costume, mm -hmm. it kind of makes them outside of the law. It's amongst their community. If you if you're prepared to do the job and you wear the costume, everybody looks the other way. I always kind of figured it'd be like getting out of the way. I mean, Ghostface is a killer and he doesn't care who gets in his way. Mm. Oh no, no no! I mean, that's why the other people don't get themselves involved. Mm. That's that's why everybody stays locked in. Once he assumes that persona, then he's kind of above the law. Yeah, and everybody just looks the other way. Yeah, it must be something yeah. like that. It's gonna yeah. have to be something like that. Yeah. So everything is going to run through pretty much the same until we get to the witch's cabin. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so again, looking through the old uh, an old chest or something, takes out the tattered costume, uh, hands it to him. So the power is already in the costume, or does she have to do like a ritual and stuff that we can throw in there as well? I think we should throw a ritual. I have like a, a bit like how he does, she'll, she'll cut him and link him to the mask. So Do we then, I suppose, we have to, as a conceit of the thing... He still got. He gets given as part of the a part of the costume is the knife that Ghostface normally uses is kind of synonymous with the character in the same it's way. It's true. It's a particular kind of knife, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Why not? I mean, it's not like it's hard to explain why Alan Ed would have a knife anyway. But it's it's more like this is all part of the costume. This is all part of the ritual. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's a nice touch. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so it would be the, the costume, the mask, gloves as well. Well, it is the gloves. Ghostface has the gloves, doesn't yeah. he? So I suppose, yeah. Murderer's gloves. <laughs> Which also looks suspiciously like driving gloves. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah, they do, don't they? Meanwhile, back at the house, the uh, those guys, are obviously the other two kids are locked up, aren't they? Uh, yeah, they're locked up. They're all talking about how they're worried about Maggie, who's freaking out on the couch. Mm -hmm. At the moment, this part of things is kind of run, running on rails. Near miss. Near miss. That's just how I'd label the scenes. Near miss, do the right thing, and then bury him, Billy. Yeah, you see, that's it. I don't think we'll get Billy's burial. No. I think we'll... Ooh. So maybe he leaves the body, Billy's body, with her to prepare. Mm -hmm. Leave the boy. Intending to bury him after the job is done. Okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So that's perfect. Just, yeah. Cool. And I don't think we're becausing movie here at all. No, 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 not at all. Fantastic. And then from there we will go. So I've got us. Is it Maggie and Steve? They're the first two. Go for a walk. That's right. To talk. And he gets killed, but she. Well, gets no. Up. Maggie gets up and kind of zombies her way out of the cabin, and Steve goes after her. That's right. And um, they start talking. And he gets grabbed. Sorry, hang on. He gets grabbed? I'm trying to remember. Sorry, I'm going to rewatch this. He gets grabbed and pulled up into the tree. So um, how are we going to simulate that? Well, um... Oh. We've forgotten something. What have we forgotten? Surprise, Sydney. Oh, shit, yeah. And we're in 1988, so there's no mobile phones. Dad, we didn't think this through too much before we decided to do this, did we? <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, okay, so rather than it being a phone, 
the costume changes his voice because it's quasi supernatural. Okay, yeah, yeah, nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, yes. So you still get the voice. Mm-hmm. So they just hear this voice from the trees, mm-hmm. which again doesn't mean anything to them. So in this case, it'll be, "Hey, Steve, do you like riding bikes?" <laughs> <laughs> I guess it would be. Mm, they are sour. I like it. Mm. It's going to be a nightmare in the edit. <laughs> <laughs> so we get um, this voice from the thing. Maggie freaks out and runs away. Steve yeah. gets up and tries to tough it out. I guess. Yeah. So maybe in this case he goes to he goes into the trees to to see what's up there, and ends up in a tree somewhere and come jumps down on him and does him with the knife that way yeah sure why not yeah mm-hmm. um, yeah because yeah, he's you know he's, he's a pretty tough guy so he needs the element of surprise I mean I know obviously Ed is as well but yeah comes down on him from from behind gets him on the ground <coughs> one <coughs> gone one gone yes <laughs> but Maggie never makes it back to the cabin does she because mm-hmm. does she Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Maggie taken. Yeah, that's later. Yeah, Maggie's taken later. It's after the boys go hunting. Yes, Steve. And then they find his body. Dispatch War Rocket Ajax to bring back his body. So yeah, again, we are very quickly towards the end of Act Two because most of this seems to happen in Act Three. Most of the killing and all that kind of stuff, which is probably a good place to do a shot. Uh, keeping in theme with with the season. Uh, this one's going to be for. Another one of the audio horror channels that I really like listening to. Oh, cool. Uh, I think it's one I have done one before, but I haven't done it for a while. So this is for Matty from Matty's Storyland, which is a fantastic channel. Uh, I think it's been going about two, three years, about, about three years. I had noticed he hasn't put anything out recently, but I did message him and he said, oh, he's good, he's hoping to get back into it again soon. But do check his channel out. He does a lot of audio horror, a lot of classics. Uh, Lovecraft, uh, some MR James... Bram Stoker, all of the other classic kind of ghost stories, but he also does a lot of other stuff as well. So he does a lot of like poetry. Oh yeah. On on some of them, uh, I know he's got a few of Shakespeare's sonnets that he's done and things like that. Okay. So it's not just long form content. It, it long form sort of stories. There are shorter ones. There's a fantastic one I was listening to. I was listening to again the other day, which is uh, Alone by Edgar Allan Poe. So some short little ones that are like like three four minutes long. Uh, the other one I listened to as well was the Ball- Ballad of Reading Joe, um, Oscar Wilde. Oh right, okay. So yeah, there's a range of stuff on there, but yeah, do um, do check it out. Um, give him some love because he fully, fully deserves it. With his, he's got this wonderful, soothing Welsh accent, <laughs> which works really well for for storytelling. So Matthew, hope you're doing okay. Uh, do check out his channel, and as always, thank you for all of your support as well. Yes, go check it out, folks. So yeah, so they go out, they find Steve's body. Mm-hmm. Yes. They're even more going to think that it's a human agent, because stab marks. Yeah. And this is where Maggie gets grabbed. Yes. So do we want to then, at this point, before the end of Act 2, put in that they see this weird ghostly face in amongst the trees? Or do we save that for just the person who's about to be killed? No, I, if if I'm right, he's not there. He's gone to their cabin. Because that's when he takes Maggie, isn't it? <sighs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so the boys are looking for Steve, but they don't. They're not going to see. They're not going to see him because he's at the cabin and take go, going after Maggie. Of course he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. So I'm guessing instead of taking Maggie, he chases her out of the cabin in a different direction. Yeah, yeah. So this again, we can throw in if we like, because we've just put just a little tweak of supernatural in there. I know uh, what's his name, Joel. Is Joel it? has the gun. Yes, but Joel pulls the phone out the wall. Pull, pulls the cable out the wall. Yes. So Maggie's in the house on her own, and the phone rings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Maggie. Yeah, I like it. It's a nice touch. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice touch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Go on. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we can you know, do. We've the... got some supernatural. We should lean into it a little bit. Yeah. And then, as you say, so we get a, a scream esque chase through the house with her. Maybe even if it's accidentally hitting him or knocking him over, and then follows her outside and runs her down. 
Yeah, 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 something like that. A nice little sequence. Yes, because it's Act 3 where we get Maggie at the window, isn't it? Cause we, yeah, that's technically the beginning. Yeah, I yeah. mean, obviously we get the change here because we're not going to have the bit with stop it. Exactly. Like so maybe let's turn that on its head. As for the end of Act 2, we have a moment where Ed catches up with Maggie and is trying to wrestle her down to, 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 to overpower her. And she's going, no, 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 stop it. Not like this, not like this. And then we get Ed say, yes, like this. So we know that he's fully committed to his evil deeds. And that's our end of second act? Would that would that fit? Yeah, okay. Happy with that? Yeah. Yeah, you I think so. That? Yeah, I think I'll go with that. You're just so we far know more ideas than I am at the moment. <laughs> just so that we know that um so with all, as you know, so as an as the audience we know that there's no remorse for him here. That he is He's committed fully to this path. To the course of action, yes. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. That was not too bad, but again there's gonna be a lot to do in Act Three, I think. I mean, I took, just uh, talk about that for a second. Mm. Uh, do you remember um, Fear Street? Which one? Uh, the second one, 1978. Mm-hmm. 1978. You know, like when the spell happens and it just sort of overtakes him and suddenly he's just not that person anymore. Yeah. I think I was kind of imagining something like that in my head, that it's it's the personality, it's the mask. It is the, ma- the mask. Yeah, the, the mask just smooths away the conscience. Yeah, and the guilt and things, and just allows you to yeah. So, which is interesting because it's kind of knocking on the door of Pumpkinhead, just gently, just gently, but yeah. it's enough to make it to keep it different. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. I think I don't think we're I don't think we're screwing up too badly here. No, no, no. no, no. I think we 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 teetering near the line, but not over it. Yeah, third act's probably going to end up being a mess. Um, but again, I said I think third act's going to be more. How do we? perform these deaths with an agent who's only supernatural light should we say diet supernatural Uh, (laughs) couple of questions before we get started on act three Mm -hmm. properly yeah go ahead one are we going down to the final girl we should decide this now or are we going to spare some people Uh, we've got four left at this point so who is it that so she makes it out and you have to remind me of names because I keep forgetting names so because. Kim is the next one who that's dies right. very shortly afterwards as they all leave the, the, the cabin that's right that's when Ed arrives on the scene mm-hmm. obviously that's not going to happen that's right and then they get help from Bunt yeah who then takes them to the church because the, the, there's two of them get out isn't there Final girl and the the other guy as well. Chris, Did they both survive. Uh, well, he's certainly, uh, but still crawling all around alive on the ground at the end. Uh, you don't see him die. No. But then again, well, the movie just ends. It does, yeah. Well, we could again. It, it depends on how we want to do this because if we want to keep that kind of motive from Scream, because obviously Randy survives, doesn't he? I'm not Randy. No, oh, yeah, that's true. So not down to the final girl. We can keep, go down to do, those two keep, if you want to keep okay. doing that. One. Cool. That makes us our, our third act fairly simple. Uh, and the other thing is somehow we need to foreshadow the whole thing with the mask. Like we need to find a way to show our characters that the mask is is supernatural. Yeah, that they've got to get it off. And otherwise, if somebody just randomly rips it off and oh, suddenly they can kill yeah, it. that's it's, cheap. It's, it's that's a bit cheap. cheap. Um, we need to put something in. No, we haven't even shot him yet, have we? We should have really done something in Act 2, then, really, shouldn't we? Well, that's that's kind of where I am at the moment. Okay, so we're going to have to very quickly jump back into Act 2. Let's say when he, when, he, when he attacks Steve, there's more of a fight. Steve grabs a bit of wood or something and twats him around a few times and is surprised that, that nothing happens. Nothing happens. Okay, so we've got the him being invulnerable thing. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Because they're down by the cabin. So let's not just make it a bit of wood let's say it's a bit of old fence so it's a bit of wood with a nail or something in it so it's something that you can do real damage with mm-hmm. okay yeah. yeah something that we know that he can inflict lethal damage with and he kind of takes it just so we know that the, as I said just to really like a whack whack yeah. in the gut kind of with the nail yeah and when it comes out there's there's nothing on there yeah that works for them because I think I've got a way we can we can cheek it in later okay cool. for showing that the, the, the mask is the key there's two ways we can do it one way we can do it is it's one of the lines of the Monastery Rite makes some kind of cryptic allusion to the mask if somebody's clever enough to figure out what the riddle of, the, of that verse is they know they have to take the mask off and because they're meeting Brunt later, who knows the nursery rhyme. Okay. 
yeah, all right, I like that. I like yeah. that. The other way was maybe a bit more direct. Would be somebody hits him in the in the head, and while he doesn't take any damage, there's just this red smear appears in the ghostly face. I I, know, I like the rhyme. The rhyme better. I okay. like the rhyme better. I think that works better, creating a little mythology here. Fantastic. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think that works. So, Maggie at the window. Oh right, yes, yes, yes. We have Maggie at the window. Are we or happy? through the window? I'm actually just thrown the window. Thrown the window. Thrown, window. thrown through the window. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Mm. Then Joel, I'm the one you want, and then we probably. I think that's the first time you get to properly see him in all his glory. Yeah. Uh, when he grabs Kim. Right here, we can have a moment. Joel's got a gun. <laughs> Jamie Briggs got a gun. He's got a gun. We can really hammer in the. I'm invulnerable thing. You know, I, I'm the one you want. I'm the one you want. Ghost, ghost head goes after him. Mm -hmm. And then Joel shoots him. And again, we get the same thing. But you get that you get that lovely bit when he, you know, he shoots him and he falls flying on his back. Yeah. And they're all like, yeah, it's a motherfucker or whatever. And... He sits up again. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it happens in many, many movies, but I love it. It's always, yeah, 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 yeah. You had to do that moment. Yeah. I want to say then, if he gets a second shot, mm -hmm. brings up and he shoots him through the face. And it's like, and it is like, ghost face it just passes through it's incorporeal yes fantastic I love that yes 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 yes, yes. Oh. No, sorry no, that, that's, that's a lovely it's a lovely cinematic moment I like it are we, so are we saying that this is happening after Kim's death I'm saying we're doing, this is before Kim's this death is this is immediately death. before Kim's death so with that with Kim's death then maybe it should be because again we're not saying that he's supernaturally strong chains her up to something and drags no it, I was going to say some kind of winch or something to get her up into the tree yeah I know what you mean but I think we're we might be trying too hard to to emulate to, the kills from the film from the original film I just, I'm just I'm just trying to I don't see where it makes sense yeah, for him to do that. Because he'd have to set up something prior or something, mm, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah. That's the, you know, it's it's all getting a bit... I mean, oh, no, 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 I know what we do. Oh, God, it's simple. So she screams and runs. You know, uh, you know. Joel does his thing, shoot, shoot, shoot. Obviously, no. He starts going for Kim. She freaks and runs. Ghostface chases her, and she just starts climbing a tree. <laughs> yes, of course she does. <laughs> And he follows her out. To it, we then get our yeah, yeah, yeah. He our falling him. kill. Yeah, onto the rock of doom. Oh, that's a real backbreaker of a. Uh, it is that that the way. I mean, well, that's when you get when that. you get Stan Winston directing a film. <laughs> oh yes, indeed, it does. It does look good. Is that the only film he's ever? Is that the only film he's directed? I've not. I heard believe of so. Him. Yeah, I believe he's, he's the only one he directed. He's, he's I've been involved in other areas of other films where of he was, but, um, but I think that was the only one he dire actually directed. So he didn't do the sequel or anything, so I've not seen this two I'm pretty sequels. sure he didn't have anything to do with the sequel. Okay. I did watch it once, it's not very good. Um, mm. It's different creature design as well. Oh, uh, okay. Blah! So yes, Kim, Kim's death. Kim dead. Uh, this He's gotta move. Gotta move, yeah, and this is... Normally this would be where Ed arrives, but this is, this is where they end up. Ha! Ah, perfect! Sorry, just the way I've labelled this down. Hillbilly House, get off my land, and then I've got headshot. So I think somebody does chew pumpkin head in the head, don't they? Yes. So what that bit I was saying there about somebody firing the, 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 the shot and it goes, passes through his head, it's it's there, it's, it's in the film. There. yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go to Bud's, not Bud's, Bud, Bud get Bud's help and go to the old church. And this is where Joel gets killed, isn't it? Yes. It's so quick. He's you know He's the main cause of all of this. But he gets taken up, and I know, yeah, we're in Act Three. The fact that he doesn't kind of kill everybody else leading up to him. Yeah. Do, do we want to do that? Are we are we bound by that, or do we want to keep Joel in the movie longer, or are we happy for him to bow out here? Mm. Brum, 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 brum. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we're we're happy towards the end. Uh, we're we're uh, if we keep Joel alive longer, we're making a longer movie. We are. That's true. That is true. And he does, yeah, because we are, as you say, getting close to the end now anyway. Even more so because we're losing all of the... Although, that's the point, though. We are losing all of the stuff with Ed in the original Pumpkinhead. Yes, we are. So keeping John alive for longer would help us get closer to the original runtime. Okay, okay. Uh, all right, okay. So say it looks like Joel's going to get... get. Mm -hmm. No, there's a, a struggle. He's trying not to get stabbed. Um, and somehow he manages to partially pull off the mask. 
<laughs> so you said I was having all the good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I don't know, maybe discombobulates Ed for a moment, and it's enough for them to then get away a bit further. Yeah, I was going to say, if you don't mind, uh, if, if, if you agree to this, uh-huh. as you say, he partially pulls off all the, the, the mask. Mm-hmm. As he does so, all of the wounds that Ed has suffered so far take effect. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, what, take it, take it, take it. And that's it, what discombobulates him. Yeah, 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 that's absolutely take it. Which gives Joel the opportunity to run away. Yeah. Maybe, so maybe that's it. Maybe Joel doing that is the missing piece that they need to solve the riddle of the nursery rhyme to work out the thing about the mask. Right, yeah, yeah, yes, okay. So yeah. they need to get the, all three of them back together to share notes, if you like. We go then, we do the bit in the church, so we say, I, I'm assuming this thing, because it is of an unholy origin, I mean... We get a similar kind of thing with him going into the church. Yes. Uh, which is even more so, even more poignant for Ed. And it's never specified that he's particularly pious, but still what he's doing is an affront to God. So maybe we still get that moment where he looks at the old crucifix in the church and thinks... Yeah. Are we? Yeah, we can have that moment, yeah. Fantastic. And then we go bike flying. Bike flying, yes. <laughs> yeah, so they get to the vehicles. And that's perfect, because they all converge at the vehicles. So you get... Is it Chris and what was the other girl's name? Tracy. Tracy, that's it. Chris and Tracy come from one direction and Joel turns up from the other direction? Yeah. Uh, but obviously Chris gets there first. So, I mean, I mean, because there is the one bike, I know Chris goes to take it, but Joel's the better rider. So do we put Joel on the bike and gets thrown? Oh no, we want Chris out of the way because he's, he's going to survive. Yeah, yeah, yes. That makes more... Oh, no, 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 we're not going to get that because we don't have a supernatural killer. Because Pumpkinhead picks up the bike, doesn't he, and throws it. Uh-huh. We can't do that because Pumpkinhead's not... Or our ghost head isn't that strong he's just he just doesn't take damage uh, ghost ghost face fucks up the uh, the, the, the gas line. the gas lines yep nice and simple he kind of I mean obviously I guess ghost face does you know, on occasion okay hang on a minute just gonna say he does sometimes you know obviously he does improvise where mm. necessary so maybe we need a big explosion okay maybe he's, we do. yeah he's messed he's messed up the, um, the the fuel lines like you say throws in a flaming torch or a stick of dynamite or something yeah Put them even more on the back foot. Yeah. So we need to... Chris needs to be wounded. And we need just a couple of minutes for them to compare notes. This is a potential break in the movie. Because in this part of the movie, this is when Ed turns up in this truck to drive them away to another location. This is true. So we may have to because movie a truck. One that's not locked. Yes, of course, because Ed's truck would still be up at the... Well, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One very quick thing, sorry, that I think we, we didn't forget, we just didn't say anything about it. When they're in the church, uh-huh. before he turns up, that's where you get the full thing about the nursery rhyme. Yes, it is, it's a bad that's story. A, yeah, yeah I, I thought it was obvious, but just for the audience's sake, so they know that we've covered it. Yeah. But no, the truck could still be there or close by, because Ed would have had to have driven back down from the witch's house. In the truck. Oh, right. You know, I just assumed that he went on foot from the cabin. I was just assuming, though. If, yeah, oh, okay. Well, yeah, we can say that he comes back down and leaves it. His yeah. truck is parked somewhere close he hasn't by. Lost, he hasn't lost his abilities, has he? No, of course no. he can still drive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, so Ed's truck is there. Again, there's a quite a nice parallel there. They spot it amongst the trees, like Neil's car. Oh, of course, yes. Is that what you're looking for? And that gives him a chance to talk. And um, Brunt gets... Brunt. Sorry, that's Deep Space Nine. Brunt! F-C-A! <laughs> I'm sure Mike from Red Letter Media would be pleased with knowing that reference. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah Brunt. Brunt in the closet. Brunt, sorry, yeah, Brunt in the closet. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. So we can still keep that all the same? Yeah. And again, we can do some more stuff with the voice there, with him sort of calling out to him. You wanted this, Brunt. This wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for you. Are you enjoying the show? Just like a scary movie. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, why not? You know, that's a nice line to get the... Uh... Yeah, get the reference in. But again, maybe that's it. Again, it's the personality of the of the costume starting to assume more of control. Uh, yeah. Or just, just affect his outlook slightly. Yeah. But he gets away, doesn't he? Uh, but he, he does, but he nearly dies multiple times. Yes. <laughs> And then we get, oh, then we get a, th- a flamethrower. <laughs> yeah, we get a th- flamethrower, really, don't we? So do they? I can't remember. So they do drive away, don't they? Yeah, they drive away. They go to Ed's house. So do we then throw in him in the back of the truck, trying to run them off the road? I know that's not in the film, but what? Uh, why? We, we, the reason we drive them away so we give them that time to have. Oh. Uh, 
I'm just confusing the situation. So how are we going to get the flamethrower in? Because it's Ed who grabs the flamethrower, isn't it? So they're searching for stuff before he arrives? Yes, because of course he's going it's to take his, him... It's in his garage shed yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah. But they've also got longer because he's not supernatural. He has to catch up to them. Yes. So yeah. they've got time to search. Yeah. And he arrives as they're searching the barn or the, the garage. Yeah. And they found the flamethrower. So we get the flamethrower a moment, but of course nothing apparently happens. Um, so how do we end this thing? I'll take you... We still need to take out Joel. Yes. Um... We could throw just just a little nod when he kind of gets him with the flamethrower. You see, like like a flaming skull. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a little, a little bit cheeky, a little bit cheeky. But we could just just pop that in there. Maybe that's it. Go on. Ghosthead gets into a fight with Joel after being burnt and stuff, and they're struggling and tussling. Uh huh. He gets stabbed a few times, so it's Joel who shouts to the others, "Kill me!" And they shoot the tank. Oh. Which is enough to because the, the mask then gets damaged, or yeah, or the explosion he goes up in flames. Ah, oh, no, it's it's a bit of both, isn't it? They're having a struggle. He's already taken a few stabs. He grabs and pulls the mask off, and then says, "Shoot me!" Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh <Yeah>. Jesus! <laughs> that's the finale. Yeah, that's the finale. That's um, the finale. And they kind of see because I mean. Obviously, they'd have probably guessed, but they've had because the the pace of the film is quite high octane. You know, they've only had a couple of moments to kind of consider what's happening and who's Stop doing and this. Stop and breathe and things. Yeah. yeah, and so there is still a bit of a reveal for them. They've probably already guessed, but never had a chance to say it. You know, amongst themselves. And instead of having it end with the witch burying something, I think we should take a leaf out of Hellraiser's book and have the witch walk out of the darkness and pluck the mask off the burning body walk away into the woods yes absolutely yes oh yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. No, no 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 that was I like that I like that that's a nice touch that is a very nice touch phew huh well we got there I was a bit worried I was yeah I think I was worried we were going to make a nothing burger same I, I, it was like well what you know what 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 <laughs> I'm just so excited about being back in delivery that's what it is. Um, I believe you. Millions wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I was just worried about you know how, as you say, how are we going to make a difference, and, and is there enough there to, to again not make, as we said at the start, the same film. Yeah, I think no, I think we succeeded. I think we succeeded. We got there in the end because, as you say, yeah, the film just kind of stops. Oh, no, that's dark. I like your ending. It's fine. I had, I had another idea for the ending, but it, it, it's it's really dark. It is the spooky season. I'm sorry. The mask, she's making a new mask out of Billy's face. Oh, <laughs> oh that's evil. That's evil. Go on. Go on, take it. <laughs> Oh, no, you win. <laughs> I'm sorry. You win the prize. <laughs> you evil, evil man. Fantastic. Okay, well, brilliant. That's... First one for the month wrapped up. We will be back next week with Pumpkin Face <laughs> as our big orange orangey demon thing is unleashed on Woodsboro. Indeed. So until next Friday, as always, have a brilliant weekend, have a brilliant start to next week, and look after yourselves. As always, guys. TTFA. <laughs> Ba 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 